The hearing will reconvene. My apologies to the witnesses. Um, there are a, a series of uh, surprising votes on the floor which were not anticipated, the first of which took almost an hour. And so uh, uh, I regret that um, uh, the hearing was disrupted. I'm hopeful that some other members will be able to get back in between votes as I have, but if not, following my questions, we will adjourn if no one else is here. Um, and I uh, apologize for that because so many members did want to participate. Um, let me ask um, you, Dr. Hoffman. You have focused on terrorism for 30 years. You've now you're, turned your attention elsewhere. But as you re-intersect <laughs> these issues, especially the stories we've heard from other witnesses about how people get hooked on these internet sites and how um, the uh, people, uh, people who show vulnerabilities on sites are preyed upon. How big an issue do you think this is? Well, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still focusing on it, of course, just uh, from an academic perspective, but I work closely with the government. Um, I mean, it's enormous. I think exactly as you've heard from the other witnesses. Um, it's enormous in the sense that, in, this, in, in two senses. Firstly, that it's a very inexpensive means for the terrorists. Um, it's very, they can communicate nearly in real time. But I think the biggest part of this is twofold. One, that these falsehoods and conspiracy theories have now become so ubiquitous and so pervasive that they're believed. So you have almost a parallel truth. And it's become a very effective tool for recruiting people. And the key is that the terrorists now have, in essence, they can direct their messages, as I said in my testimony. They can tailor it to whichever demographic they're right. attempting to reach. You have terror terrorist groups that have sites in more than 20 different languages, for instance. But the key is, behind all this radicalization and information, and that's what I think sometimes we're at risk in Washington of losing sight of, is that there are organizations behind this process. This isn't an organic, sometimes we call it homegrown terrorist. This isn't an organic homegrown process. There are terrorist organizations that are actively and deliberately manipulating, exploiting, and in turn harnessing this radicalization in the service of violence. And that's what makes it dangerous. Well, if I could just interrupt you there, I, I mean homegrown terror in the sense that this effort grows homegrown terrorists. Uh, it's not necessarily spawned by them, but it finds them and develops them into uh, violent killers. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's the proliferation. And we've ne in the study of terrorism, we've never seen a phenomenon like this and the power of the internet. And it's a vacuum that these terrorist and jihadi groups have filled. And as your bill proposes and as these hearings are about, we've done, unfortunately, lamentably little to push back against. Well, my thought is, uh, having listened to all of you, uh, to make sure that this commission, if it becomes law, and I'm hopeful that it will, uh, has a major focus on studying this phenomenon. Does everyone agree that that's a useful thing to do? I see you all nodding. Would anyone like to make a comment about that? I think you, yes, Ms. Katz. Regularly, I meet with government agencies from all over the world. I have not met any person that really understands how this works. And, you know, if you don't really know how something works, you don't understand how the jihadists operate online, you will never be able to counter the phenomena. The first and most important step in this counterterrorism world of fighting them over the internet is to understand how they do things. I can tell you from our own experience, just using open source methods, we were able to stop suicide bombers um, in many places in the world where no government agency in the United States or elsewhere had the information. And so to me, in order to be able to have any kind of progress or know what kind of legislations you need to put, you have to understand it, and that's why I think that this panel is, is very important. And by stopping uh, suicide bombers, you mean specific suicide bombers specific intervening? individuals that and, were and recruited online and announced about their time that arrived to go for their own ver journey. And we alerted, in one case, we actually called immediately the FBI, and they said, you know, Rita, uh, we don't know how legal it is for us to go and stop something like that. I said, look, we have the email accounts. We have information about the individual. Let's do something. We don't know where he's going to carry out his attack. It was an English message board, and we were extremely nervous. They did not do anything. We ended up finding the individual in the UK, alerted the Scotland Yard. They found him on the plane heading to Pakistan. 
stopped him, brought him back. And I think that what this case, it's just one case of many others, illustrates is the fact that we had to play the role of law enforcement agencies because we are monitoring and doing what is needed to be done after studying the internet instead of having the FBI alerting the British authorities about such a plot. Um, Mr. Weitzman, thank you for that. Mr. Weitzman, you were talking about positive messages that your organization puts on. I, I think Mr. Dent, before we recessed, was asking what we can do to counter this. Could you give us more specific information about what kind of positive message you put out there and what effect it has on people? Well, when I say positive message, um, I, I mean that a message that is basically countering the, the counter history that uh, Dr. Hoffman just mentioned. Um, these people are constructing their own version of reality, um, full of conspiracy theories, full of, of doctored videos, um, things that will both recruit or inflame the emotions. Um, they're presenting a one-sided view of Islam as well as any other religion, as well as many other events in world history. Um, so what we are talking about doing and what we did was created one website to sort of counter that and bypass the official organs of, of uh, government and media distribution um, and to present to Arabic, Farsi, um, Indonesian, etc., cetera, uh, people in basic history or view of Jews and Judaism that would be um, presented obviously by uh, people who knew the traditions and knew the history, did not get into the politics of the Middle East issue, uh, but was there to sort of try to begin to counter that. We have a on the website, a book that I uh, wrote that's the first refutation in English of the uh, Protocols of the Elders of Zion that was translated into Arabic and is also available on the website. The Protocols is, is basically the bedrock, the Bible, if you will, of all these conspiracy theories. So this is an attempt to refute the Protocols um, directly, each protocol by protocol, and it's now available in Arabic as well. So that, that's an attempt to reach out. We, we uh, had a meeting in uh, Indonesia as well under the, uh, the patronage of the former President Wahid, one of the leading uh, Muslim leaders in the world, that brought together Jewish, Muslim, and Christian uh, leaders in an attempt to, again, bypass the, the inflamed rhetoric of the Middle East and reach the largest Muslim population in the world, which is in Southeast Asia and so on, um, and to try to, by uh, doing that, to present a more calm, positive um, message that hopefully will get translated into a mass reality. And how many people hit on that website? How do you get people to go there? We have actually, we had a launch. We had invited people from the Arab media. We had a representative of the Organization of Arab uh, uh, Countries um, there. We've had a couple of hundred On this vote, the yeas are 218. The nays are 194. Pardon me, just a moment. The previous question is ordered. The question is on the motion to refer. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Pardon me. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion. Okay, maybe another vote. We need to turn it on. We, Excuse we me. We launched the website in, uh, in mid-September. Since then, we've already had a couple of hundred responses, emails that people have written in questioning. Some of it is very, uh, what we call mm -hmm. hate rhetoric, um, but some of it is just very open questioning about uh, the, the items on there. So this is one of the approaches. Um, if I can comment as well very quickly, the issue that we have in some ways is that we are trying to fight this war with the last war's battles, which is very often um, a pattern that we see repeated in history. The internet, because of its globalization, because of the, all the influences that have been mentioned earlier, is something that requires new strategies and new approaches, and we're very often looking to the old strategies and old approaches for answers. Um, and lastly, we have also been, for the past decade, um, contributing a CD, a samples of all the uh, type of material, extremist material that could be found out, um, and we've been distributing this to law enforcement, including the FBI, government officials, and uh, we're happy to continue that type of cooperation in the future. Well, let me just say I applaud that. I applaud the action that you're taking very much, and I hope you recover your voice very soon. Uh, Ms. Katz, you've done groundbreaking work. It's extraordinary what you've done. And Dr. Hoffman, I'm going to continue to count on you. Uh, wherever you're, you're, you, you, you may land next, uh, you're someone whose voice is very, very important. I apologize to all the witnesses. This next vote, the one that is current, is a five-minute vote. 
and it takes grandma here a few minutes to get over there. Uh, so with no other members here and no real prospect that this floor action is going to calm down, I adjourn this hearing. I thank you for participating. The hearing is adjourned.